Hello, welcome to theCUBE's presentation of Women in Tech Global Events celebrating International Women's Day. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE here in Palo Alto, California. You got two great guests, Cindy Paul, head of solution architects for public sector in Mexico for AWS, and Fernandez Bernardi, who's also the head of solution architects for public sector in Brazil, both with AWS. Thanks for coming on, appreciate your time. Thanks for the invitation. Thank you, John. So we're celebrating uh, International Women's Day this, this week and this month and all, pretty much every day, I think we're going to be doing a lot of good stuff, but today's a special day and talking about people's careers, um, their roles, um, the gender gap is a big theme this year. These are all the topics that are going on and being discussed. So um, it's been a lot of fun, we're learning a lot. I have to ask you guys uh, with AWS, uh, Cindy, we'll start with you. How is AWS addressing the gender gap in its technical teams? Because you know, solution architects, they're technical and yeah. we need more women in there. Where's the, where's, how, are, how is AWS ad addressing the gender gap with its technical teams? Yes, for sure. Thank you very much. And let me start with a, a, a quick note about what is the situation in Mexico. Uh, let me go first into a, a uh, report published by IMCO, uh, and this is uh, talking about this gender gaps in STEM careers. And let me tell you that three out of 10 professionals who choose careers related with the STEM, with this, uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics are women. So can you imagine this difference? It's really critical because for sure, we have few women and in the moment that you try to reach people to uh, to to be part of the company it's all, it's, it's difficult so it's important for aws to be a uh, very very supportive in this initiative and also to be supporting diverse teams so that's why uh, we are very supportive in in the in bringing diverse talent in the company and there's a lot of um uh, focus on getting people early into the pipelining is that's yeah. another big area. Uh, did the study show anything there? Well, basically is that we are starting to push harder to, to bring more information to the ladies, to the women in, in general, and also to start developing the technical skills because, because it's really difficult. And in the moment that you try to do this, you uh, uh, start like, uh, seeing these behaviors or stigmas about this is only for men, it's not for women. So we are trying to uh, start breaking these, these points in, in, in general. Fernando, we had a great chat about Latin America at reInvent on theCUBE uh, with your leader over there. And uh, we we're talking about the broader community and how you guys are partnering with external organizations and customers. How is Amazon Web Services, AWS aiming to foster better balance and gender balance in technology partnerships in Latin America? Sure, so, well, the situation in Brazil is not different from the situation that Cindy was mentioning in Mexico, right? Uh, the, our research shows that women only represent around 37% of the workforce, uh, where in the country we have uh, over 50, 51, 52% of uh, women as part of our population, so there is, while we, uh, we can take this as from a gap perspective, also we can take it from a opportunity perspective. There is such a, a, a huge unexplored workforce that we can bring uh, to, to be part of AWS in the technology world, right? So um, for us on AWS and Amazon, it's part, part of our day one culture. So we are still learning, right? Uh, and we're still uh, uh, trying, experimenting uh, to see how we can uh, bring more women to, to the tech world. Uh, one of the things that we are investing in, in Brazil and in Latin America uh, are the early in career talent programs. Uh, this is something that uh, we have the opportunity to work with students. And in Latin, it's a little bit different from the US. We have the opportunity to, to work with them for one year, uh, sometimes for two years in a row while they work, they are still in the university and we prepare that talent really early in their career and bring them to be part of Amazon. So yeah, I'm, I'm super excited with those programs. I can you know talk more about it, uh, but this is one of the initiatives that, that we are uh, batting that will 
maybe a, be a, a game changer for us in the technology. Yeah, those are very interesting stats. 37% of the workers uh, in country where women represent over half of the population. So definitely a lot of work to be done. I got to ask both of you, Amazon has a leadership principle that says that they want to strive to be the, the world's or Earth's best employer, Earth being you know Earth Day and all that sustainability as well. Diversity, inclusion and equity is a big part of, of that mission. Um, more and, and also Amazon's also known for a high performing work environment. So, so having the best diversity and inclusion, you know, is, a, is a, as some say, and many are saying is a force multiplier in performance. How is that going in your areas? Can you talk about how the culture um, that you're in, the countries that you're in and the Amazonian leadership principles tie together? Can you share your thoughts and experiences? Sure, I can, I can uh, get started maybe with that one. So although we have a new leadership principle, uh, from my perspective, we have, we have always had leadership principles that foster uh, diversity and, and inclusion, right? Pick up, uh, earn trust as an example, right? It says, uh, listen uh, uh, carefully, right? And speak candidly. This is, uh, for me, it's the baseline for any, any inclusion conversation, right? And uh, also you have uh, things like have backbone, disagree and commit, like you are empowering people to actually have an opinion and bring back that opinion and be heard, right? So it was already there. <laughs> I think the good thing now is that we have a very specific leadership principle so that there is no, no room for interpretation, right? It's right there saying that there is a mission, a mission to, to be the best employer, right? And, and I'm, I'm very excited about it. Cindy, share your thoughts too. I like that yeah. comment because you know Amazon culture is known for you know debate then align. Okay, and now you got that cultural factor. Now it's in the leadership principle. What's your reaction? Yes, and, and let me add a, a comment on that about Fernanda's point is that this LP is giving us like the power to give this uh, environment to propose to to give this. Uh, space to the team and also to be more creative and also to be more diverse. It's really important for us to have this space uh, with a lot of empathy with them, uh, in the space to have a lot of fun. And it's important to keep all the time in mind that are we doing the right thing for our employees? Are we empowering them to be the best of, of, of the world? So that is something that is critical for us. And, and well, that is something that we are right now uh, working on it. Okay, so first of all, I'm very impressed by both of you, you're inspiring. And I can also tell you that being a solution architect is not an easy job, it's, but it's also in high demand. A lot of people want to, they need solution architects. It's one of the most coveted positions uh, in the industry right now. So um, how do we get more women in that role? What ideas do you guys have, um, besides being great role models yourselves, how do we get more solution architects? Because it's super valuable and everyone wants to hire them. Fernanda, do you want to start? <laughs> it's you guys. <laughs> I think it, um, you touched on a very important point, John. It, it's about uh, about having having a good examples. Like, I, I mean, it's about you seeing yourself in the role, right? You, you believing that it's it's possible. It's for everyone. If you have a spirit where you you want to build things, if you have this spirit of exploring new possibilities, if you like to experiment, well, then you, you have all that we need in a solution architect, right? It's just then a matter of you know learning technical, learning technology, technical stuff. But this is this is about having fun uh, on your journey as as a solution architect as well. And, and let me tell you something that we are also investing in trainings, trainings online for the for the women that are, that has this interest, that they want to learn more about the technology, they want to have a deeper knowledge about the technical stuff. So we are supporting these initiatives, and, and that is something that they can do by your own and in your own piece. And this is an important role because they need the leadership uh, as head of solution architects. It's a good thing. Um, is there any uh, ways that you found that's a best practice 
for identifying or, or, or advice for people to know if they have what it takes or they have an affinity towards technology. Sometimes it's math because cloud is great level, levels it out. I mean, cloud is new, there's more jobs open now that didn't exist years ago, a couple years ago. So anyone can rise to the top. Yeah, I think, I think that's the beauty of the cloud. There is so much space. When we say technology, I think this is such a, a broad word, right? It, it means so much, right? It can be someone that likes to develop code. It can be someone that likes to work with infrastructure. It can be someone that likes machine learning or databases or uh, someone that is inspired about applications for the education world or to uh, research genoma or cure cancer. So yeah, I, I don't think that there is like any more like a, a specific profile. I think it's very open for everyone to explore what they love doing. And uh, even if, from a technology perspective, AWS is working to simplify access to, to the technology. If we take our services on machine learning, for instance, they are for people, for business people. Like you don't have to know much about algorithms, right? To use uh, some of the uh, AWS services. So I think it's, yeah. We're experiencing the democratization of the technology, and with that, more opportunity for people to join us. A lot of people are changing careers into cloud. So Cindy, I want to ask you guys also, if you can share how the mentoring process works there. Is there mentoring? How does that work? Do you match people? Do you guys, have you found a nice formula for providing uh, some mentoring and some pathways as people come in? Yes, we have one way to do it. We have many ways, but one is very important is that we have user groups. That is the way that we have like a community with internal and external people. And we share advices, guidance, best practices for, for the people that is interested in this matter. So for one side, as I already mentioned, we have training online that you can reach. We have a lot of resources. Maybe you can start jumping into artificial intelligence, IoT, whatever you want to, to, to go and dive deep in them. Uh, but in the other hand, we have this option to have this kind of support. We have AWS Girl Chile user groups. We have AWS Women Colombia user groups, uh, girls in Argentina. We have many of them. We have 400 user communities. So th that is the way that we can keep in touch. Any other programs? I mean, Amazon's web service and Amazon has very strong representation of women. There's a lot of pockets of women groups in all over the world. How does it come together? Because you also have customers in the user groups. You have um, partners in the partner network. You have technologists learning. So you have this ecosystem of people. It's not just AWS. How are you guys uh, extending that, 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 that gap into those areas? Exactly, and, and those conversations are, are getting um, more and more constant with our customers, right? So we used to talk about uh, technology, we used to talk about business problems, now we talk about diversity, we talk about improving representation and improving the sentiment of inclusion within our customers as well. And uh, one of the things that I, I can bring, we, we have been working with a number of our customers in Brazil, uh, just to mention Nubank, one of, of, of our customers there, in, in building uh, programs together uh, between AWS and the customer, where we train people and we uh, expose the, that, that people to the market, even if, if it's inside AWS, inside Nubank, or any other partner in that ecosystem. So we are building talent, not only for us, but for, for the entire ecosystem to, to benefit from. Okay, so I have to ask you guys, how did you guys get into the tech? Cindy, what was your, what was your, uh, what was your way? Did it just jump at you? Did it grab you? Did you kind of discover it early? When did you kind of get into the tech? That's a good question. I was remembering this moment that when I was seven years old, I just started like uh, working with uh, cars and also with that kind of, of companies, electronic companies. And in that moment say, I want to be part of this technology world. And after that in high school, I have the opportunity to touch a computer. In that moment I say, this is the thing that I want to do in the rest of my life. 
Yeah, that's it right there. You get the addiction, you taste it. Fernando, what about you? What's your story? How did you get into it? What was the moment? Was there an exact moment or did it just surround you? Yeah, I think I, I was always curious about how things work. Uh, I was not thinking about a career in tech, honestly. I was thinking about becoming, becoming a lawyer, but at some point in time, it just clicked, right? And I had actually to fight my way uh, into the technical world, literally, because I had this uh, very, very uh, uh, important university close to my house, like maybe 15 minutes from my house. But at that point in time in Brazil, that particular institution was not accepting women. And believe me, it was not like 100 years ago. Like it was... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're young, it's just recently. Yeah, so I had to move out of my uh, hometown back to the city, to uh, Sao Paulo, which is uh, our biggest city in Brazil, to you know find a place for me on an university that would take women. So yeah, I had to fight my way uh, into technology, but I'm very proud of that, that I, I was able to. Yeah, you know what's great now is you have YouTube, you have all these resources, these videos are going to be going everywhere. We're going to uh, put this out there. There's communities where people can learn and see the, uh, people like themselves on, in positions of, of leadership uh, and technology. So more and more uh, content's being out there. And I think hopefully no one will have to fight to, to get into tech. If they like it, they're in it. Uh, one of the leaders at AWS, she said, we're in a nerd native environment now. The young generation is natively technical. And I believe that, I see that. I think that's going to be a really exciting trend and seeing leaders like yourselves out there is really wonderful. So thank you for spending the time with us here on theCUBE. Um, final question I'll ask you is what's next for you, Cindy and Fernando? What's, 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 what's next in your journey? Okay, well, I think the next for me is to keep pushing the women in Mexico to keep studying and also to start thinking in what is the next step in my career? Where should I go? So I think that is the point that I want to do. Cindy, what's next for you? I feel I'm just starting. <laughs> <laughs> so much to do, so much to do. I mean, there is a... Um, a big business for us to, to make happen in Brazil right now. And um, we are looking for talent. So if the video is going to go on YouTube, I would like everybody there to know that, yeah, we are looking for talents in Brazil with opportunities all over the world, actually. And uh, yeah, that's building, building and building. And there's some great Twitch channels, by the way, too, on some developer programming. There's tons of programming. It's all out there. Congratulations. And we're looking forward to following up with you both um, um, in the future to get an update. Uh, and thank you for spending the time and sharing your, your stories here on theCUBE. I really appreciate it, thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. Okay, theCUBE presentation of Women in Tech Global Event celebrating International Women's Day. This is the beginning of more programming. We're going to see more episodes from theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.